Bukera amps have always been interesting to me. As a casual observer of the brand, I've seen many of my own friends and colleagues adopt them into their live rigs, swearing by the absolute incredible bang for your buck value they provide. But I've also seen many stories about them being unreliable amps that break down and even catch fire. Yes, literal fire. The sources of this rumor are really hard to track down with fans of the brand claiming it's corporate espionage. <laughs> Yeah, I'm serious, they actually believe that. Now, I tend to believe that these are very isolated incidents and that they are exaggerated and most likely due to user error, but that sort of story can really attach itself to a brand and make consumers weary of any future products they might develop. And this is just pure speculation, but that's probably why they are also such huge advocates of quality control as shown plastered all over their website, even developing things like their Infinium technology which will tell you if your tubes are going bad and need to be changed. Another thing worth mentioning is Bouguera's affiliation with Behringer since it seems common to see the sentiment that Bouguera and Behringer are synonymous. And while I find it curious that the Bouguera Wikipedia redirects to the Behringer page where there is actually no mention of Bouguera, supposedly Behringer acts as the exclusive distributor for Bouguera, which is an independent company. Probably a good thing seeing as how Behringer has been named in multiple lawsuits for copyright infringement, the most notable and related to Bouguera being brought forward by PV who filed two lawsuits for patent infringement, federal and common law trademark infringement, false designation of origin, trademark dilution, and unfair competition. A case that Behringer won with essentially a defense of, everyone else does it, so why shouldn't we? But these are really stories for another video, like how Behringer tried to sue Gear Sluts users for defamation. So with all that backstory out of the way, I finally decided it was time to check out a Bouguera amp and give my take on it, and hopefully find out once and for all if these are sleeper budget amplifiers, or just amps that catch on fires. What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Taylor and today we're gonna to be looking at a Bouguera 333XL and answering the age old question. Is this an undervalued great amplifier or a literal dumpster fire waiting to happen? But regardless of those rumors, I wanna know your guys' experience with Bouguera amplifiers. Do any of you own them? Have you played them? Have you had any issues with them? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Let me know down in the comments. Bouguera also has a reputation for copying the schematics from other more popular brands of amplifiers. And while I'm not exactly sure which amp that this is copying, I'm pretty sure it's either a PV Triple X or a PV JSX. If you know the answer to that, let me know down in the comments. But uh, let's plug this thing in and hopefully I don't burn my studio down. I'm plugged into this Bouguera 333XL. I'm using my Deviant Guitars Grimoire. It has EMGs, 81 in the bridge, 85 in the neck. I am using some prototype pedals. If you guys haven't caught these on my channel before, they're just something uh, I'm working on with my buddy Shay from This Heavy Earth. I have a Chug Squad t-shirt. If you want a Chug Squad t-shirt, they are available down in the description below. And uh, I also have a fire extinguisher. Better safe than sorry, my grandpa always used to say. We're on the Crunch channel, all the EQ settings, and the gain is at noon. We do not have the Excel button active yet. Let's hear what it sounds like. Not 
too inspiring. Let's start dialing things in here a little bit. Uh, I found with this amplifier that I really don't like the presence knob a lot. Like if you start turning it up past five, it just gets really ice picky. <laughs> It's just a little much. So I actually like to turn this down just a little bit here. And then compensate with the treble volume on the channel, which I find to be a little bit less extreme of an EQ boost. Pants are all dirty from that fire extinguisher. Probably not a good sign that my fire extinguisher has so much dust on it. Only you can prevent forest fires. Yeah, it has a really heavy martial vibe going on. Um, I have the gain up pretty high actually too, and it's not really that saturated. Like, let's just turn the gain all the way up and see how saturated the crunch channel gets. I mean, it's not like crazy amounts of saturation, but that's actually kind of nice on a three channel amplifier because then it actually gives you a reason to use the lead versus the crunch channel, gives you more versatility. Uh, we're gonna dial that gain back. I'm gonna turn on this boost here. You can see the settings on this boost. I'm adding a slight amount of gain with this pedal, but not really that much, just enough to engage the clipping on the pedal. Uh, let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> I like it a lot. It actually kind of reminds me of the Blue Voodoo that I reviewed a while ago a little bit. It's not like an overwhelmingly saturated or modern sound. Uh, it would fit right in with like the Marshall lineup, especially with the boost in front of it. It really just gives me that like early 2000s metalcore kind of vibe, if you know what I'm talking about. Now, I don't find that the XL buttons actually make a huge difference. They just sound like they give it a little bit more girth. <laughs> Like I said, there's not really a huge amount of difference there, but um, it is just like a tiny bit more low end. I like the low end, so we're gonna leave that guy on. <laughs> Truth be told, I kind of find myself vibing a lot more with this sort of tone these days, but uh, let's check out the lead channel. All the buttons are really, really microphonic. I just find it kind of funny. Uh, here, we'll turn the boost off. Everything's at noon. Again, not a super inspiring tone, so let's dial it in. Uh, I'm gonna keep the presence where I had it on the last channel there. Let's just go straight to the XL mode too. You know, I'm just finding like there's this really nasally high frequency that's in there that I just really don't like. 
And it's like, it's really hard to dial in and get enough trouble without just like boosting that frequency too much. Very similar to my Triple X, the controls are super sensitive. I don't know. Let's turn the boost on. Okay, to me, that's a really inspired tone, um, just for funsies. Let's try plugging into the low gain input and see if that makes any difference, especially with that frequency that I'm like not really vibing with. It's just a... I don't know if you guys are noticing this too, but everything with this amp is super microphonic. And the interesting thing is it is making a noise right in that frequency that's sort of bothering me. So I wonder if it has anything to do with like the tubes that are in here. Maybe it just needs some lower noise tubes or something like that, but uh. That actually sounds a little bit better to me. I like it more with the low gain input. It's not having a massive effect on the amount of gain that the amp is producing, but um, it does seem like that higher frequency is a little bit more under control in the low gain input. All right, let's do a clean channel real quick for all you clean dorks. Pristine clean channel, super chimey. Let's turn the reverb on here. I'm just gonna crank that thing up. Reverb sounds really nice. Not something I would probably particularly use, but it's cool that it's there. Let's go back to the lead channel. That's what it sounds like without a boost. It sounds really good. Again, it's just that high end. It is just so... There's just such a fine line between dialing out that ear piercing frequency and then just cutting too much of your top end out. Let's put the boost back on. All right, so final verdict. Yeah, it's a budget amp, but you know what? It rips. It has a lot of really cool features too. It's quite a bit microphonic. I don't know if that could be handled just by putting some more expensive tubes in it. We haven't caught anything on fire yet, so that's good. And I gotta say, just from this experience, from playing through it, if I was in the position to where I only had like three or $400 to spend on an amp head, I don't think you can really go wrong with this one, dude. I think it's a pretty good deal. <laughs> ah! Call the fire department, this one's out of control. 
guys, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you like my videos, make sure to let me know by hitting the like button and commenting below. If you really like what I do here on my channel, you can join my Patreon or my YouTube members. There's more information on that down in the description. And until we meet again, I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.